South Carolina Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace, Representative Mace, has been outspoken about the GOP's failure to moderate itself on the issue of abortion. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you very much for joining us. I, I just want to get your position on the abortion pill. What do you think should happen with it? Well, Wes, we will see the decision likely tomorrow from, from the Supreme Court on that decision. I was vocal about it last week. This was an unelected judge making a decision to ban this federally, this abortion pill, which a lot of people may not know that the decision was based on a law deemed unconstitutional, the Comstock Act, that the U.S. Supreme Court deemed un unconstitutional in 1983. And many people may not know that this drug is more than just an abortion pill. Women have, doctors have prescribed it for women who are suffering miscarriages so they can avoid having surgery. It's used in certain cancer treatments. It's used for rare diseases like Cushing's disease. There's a lot more to this uh, than meets the eye. You've been a real moderate voice on the issue of abortion. You have your own personal experience um, uh, with it. And you said that the Republican Party is extreme on it and that they don't know how to talk about it. Why is it that the Republican Party is holding on to these these extreme measures on abortion that are not popular with the American public, especially since they keep losing elections? Right, and we lost seats because of this issue last year. And I will tell you, 45 days after Roe v. Wade was overturned, my district changed dramatically. And the polling that we saw it was no longer a Republican district. And so, you know, I saw it firsthand what happened, and I, I won resoundingly. I actually talked about rape, for example, in my campaign. I ran an ad. I, I'm a victim of rape. I was raped at the age of 16. But because I'm talking about birth control, I'm talking about rape, I'm talking about incest, foster care, adoption services, rural areas that don't have OBGYN doctors. A lot of these groups are, have been attacking me, and I don't, I don't understand why we can't find some common ground with common sense solutions. For example, if you're going to ban abortion, the very minimum we should be doing is making sure that every woman in every county in this country has access to birth control. In South Carolina, for example, we have 14 counties that don't have a single OBGYN doctor. It's shocking that that's where we are today, but just some common, a little bit of common sense would go a long way for the American people here. Well, I mean, we can put up all sorts of polling on abortion. People know where, yeah. where most Americans stand on yeah. it. We can put up the map of the states that, that have outright banned abortion. What do you say to a voter who says they don't want to vote for the Republican Party because they feel like the Republican Party is out to punish women? You just talked about the lack of OBGYNs in a number of counties across South Carolina. Yeah, and it's true. I actually talk to a constituent of mine. I hear from constituents every day. I'm in a very purple district. Although I'm in South Carolina, it's it's a very purple district, and we have a lot of independent voters. They outnumber Republicans by double digits. And I spoke to an independent voter that left the Republican Party over this issue. She's not alone, and she considers herself pro-choice. But in that, she told me that her gestational limits, for example, were 14 weeks. So whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, and I'm a pro-life lawmaker, I'm somewhere between 15 and 20 weeks with, with exceptions in there. I'm, I'm reasonable about it. But whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, there's so much that we agree on, and it's how we talk about it with one another that really makes a difference to those independent voters who are going to determine, by the way, the outcome of the 2024 presidential election. And by the way, as you know, uh, Republicans have not won the popular vote in years. And this is a, an issue that is going to exacerbate that in 24. You need suburban women. Let me ask you about the other big issue that's out there, and that's guns. And I know you've been asked about it. You've said, again, that there are common sense compromises that can be had between the parties that Americans would support. You talk about more background checks, expanding them, which has a lot of support across the country, majority support across the country. Right. You also talk about Amber Alerts, uh, potentially putting out a notice that says there's a shooting in the area, stay home, hardening schools and churches, etc. Um, the other big thing is, how do you feel about assault weapons being on the market? Do you think that there should be restrictions to assault weapons? I don't, and I'm not a gun control person because I talk about gun violence a lot. Unfortunately, my district in South Carolina is, is, is not a stranger to mass shootings. And this is an issue I've worked on as a state lawmaker and now as a member of Congress. And the problem is, as soon as I say gun violence, people will automatically assume I'm talking gun control. But both sides have dug their heels in. you got to ban guns. The other side said, no, you, no, you can't ban any guns. But somewhere, again, like abortion, there's a middle ground, yeah. strengthening background checks, as you mentioned, hardening school 
schools is another. But as a Republican, because I say I don't want kids shot at school, it makes headlines and it shouldn't. But you know, when Nashville happened, we offered Easter baskets and silence and prayers and Easter baskets aren't going to cut it. And another story that I shared 10 days ago, my kids and I were a mile away from a mass shooting where six people were shot. And the first thing my babies asked me were, Mommy, where is the Amber Alert to tell us that we're near a mass shooting and maybe not leave the house or leave our location where we were? We witnessed the immediate aftermath of that shooting, all the police cars and EMS vehicles. Why is that so controversial to talk about? Why is that wrong? It shouldn't be. Uh, wh why not limit assault weapons? Just the, just the weapons that are intended to, to shoot off godly amount of, of, of rounds in seconds. The stuff that, that takes no time to kill multiple people. I mean, not talking about handguns, rifles. I'm talking about assault weapons, weapons of war. Why not get them off the market? Well, the, these guns were actually man, originally manufactured in as civilians, by civilians, for civilians, not for the military. The military did co-opt it. But I look at places like Chicago the guy where who, there but is the guy gun who, control. The guy who made the AR-15 has said, and his family has said, they are horrified by the way it's being used. Right. But pistols have been used also. I mean, if you look at Chicago, where they have banned uh, as AR-15s, for example, you can't carry more than a pistol in Chicago. Every weekend, there are dozens and dozens of shootings. And so we need to focus on the but doesn't things. That argument make, isn't that an argument to take all guns off the market when you say pistols also kill people? Isn't that just saying we should get rid of Cars, all of them? I'm asking. I mean, vehicles I mean, <laughs> kill people, too. That's the thing. Like, we have a constitution, and we should, we should look at the framework that our founders gave us and work with that framework. When I was growing up, kids had guns in their cars that they were going to go hunting after school. I grew up in South Carolina, so it wasn't uncommon, but something has changed today whereby in, in the shooting that I, my kids and I were close by to 10 days ago, these were teenagers with loaded guns. And we're seeing in South Carolina a huge increase in kids that are coming to school with loaded guns. And I also want to look at how is this happening? How is this happening in states? And what are we doing to curtail it? And I think that when you look at from a law enforcement perspective, too, I've toured the biggest jail in South Carolina is in my district. Half of the offenders we have in that jail are mental health, have mental health issues. And yeah. so I think it's a broader conversation we can have here. Why is this happening? How are, how are these guns on the market, especially if firearms that are possessed by people that shouldn't have them? How do we tighten tighten background checks, for example, how do we make our communities safer, but how do we do it in a way that doesn't violate the Constitution and brings both sides together? It's Banning a conversation. guns isn't going to do that. It's just not going to yeah. do that. And it's a conversation that absolutely needs to be had. It